To understand what the exact time is and how it all works, let's briefly review the history of this issue. The movement of the Earth and the Moon around the Sun has always been the basis for measuring time. People have constantly improved methods of measuring time. Ancient civilizations created calendars to record and measure large periods of time, including days, months, and years. Shorter intervals, hours and minutes, were marked by timekeepers. They either used the movement of the sun as a direct indicator of the current time, or measured the passage of a certain interval of time. The first devices for measuring time were used by the ancient Egyptians. During the day, they used the simplest sundials, two wooden sticks, one of which cast a shadow on the other, with markings indicating the current hour. At night, they watched the stars in the sky and also used water clocks. Water flowed from one vessel to another. A scale was applied to the walls of the lower vessel, and the water level in it, according to this scale, indicated the current time. Sundials and water clocks were later used in Greece and Rome, and later in Europe, in the early Middle Ages. Also, in the Middle Ages, a burning candle with markings along its length measured equal intervals of time as the wax burned down. To this day, there is an hourglass that measures time by the flow of sand from the upper glass reservoir to the lower one. The first mechanical clocks were made in the late 13th century. They were intended for public use and were installed in a church or other public place where many people could see them. The clocks were powered by winding a spring or lifting a weight. Toothed wheels or gears moved the hour, minute, and second hands around the dial, indicating the time. Small domestic and early pocket watches were created in the 16th century. Inexpensive factory-made wristwatches became available to everyone in the early 20th century. Eventually, people realized the need for an international time standard. Because the Earth rotates, different parts of its surface face the sun at different times of day. When it is noon in London, it is dawn in New York and still night in Adelaide. If people directly determine time based on the position of the sun, clocks around the world would have to be set to thousands of different time values. This would cause chaos, making it impossible to run trains on an accurate schedule, for example. In 1880, it was decided in England to adopt the Royal Observatory's astronomical time in Greenwich as the national standard time. This was called Greenwich Mean Time GMT. By 1884, GMT had been adopted as the standard time throughout the world. A system of 24 time zones with the center in the Greenwich meridian, which equals zero degrees longitude, was proposed. Soon, this system became widely accepted. In time zones to the east of Greenwich, the time is ahead of GMT as much as the zone is located to the east. In time zones to the west of Greenwich, the time is behind GMT by a corresponding number of hours. In the Japanese city of Tokyo, the time is ahead of GMT by 9 hours, so when it is 2 a.m. in Greenwich, it is 11 a.m. in Tokyo. On the other side of the world from Greenwich, in the Pacific Ocean, the international dateline marks where one day ends and another begins. Accurate time measurement has always been important. In the 18th century, astronomers determined precise time based on observations of the sun and stars, while navigators used this information to calculate their longitude. Clockmaker John Harrison developed a marine chronometer for this purpose. Today, as in the past, accurate time measurement is important for navigators and is also used in many other areas of everyday life. The most accurate clock is the atomic clock, which even runs more consistently than the rotation of the Earth. The time used by everyone today is based on average measurements of several atomic clocks installed in laboratories around the world. These clocks work by counting the oscillations of a light wave emitted by atoms. The latest clocks, which use cesium atoms, have an error of up to one second in 15 million years. In 1972, the GMT time standard was replaced by UTC, coordinated universal time. The new UTC standard is used for synchronizing global time systems. The main difference between UTC and GMT is that UTC is based on atomic time, while GMT is based on astronomical observations. Additionally, UTC is a more accurate and stable time standard because it includes extra seconds to correct for the Earth's rotational speed, whereas GMT does not make this correction. Since January 1, 1972, 
approximately 28 such seconds have been added. Therefore, today UTC can be from 28 seconds ahead to 28 seconds behind Greenwich. However, the GMT and UTC 24-hour time zones are identical. There is no difference between UTC 0 and GMT 0, as both terms refer to the same standard time zone based on coordinated universal time, UTC, and passing through the city of Greenwich. These two terms are interchangeable and used to denote the same time zone, because UTC 0 and GMT 0 are identical. However, the term UTC is officially used, while GMT is a concept that was used earlier. Therefore, in our time, if you need to know and apply precise time, the most accessible and convenient way is to use the time of the mobile operator network, rather than standalone mechanical or electronic watches that are not connected to the network. The time in the mobile operator network is considered more accurate than the time on a wristwatch, because the operator network is constantly synchronized with an accurate time source via the network time protocol NTP, namely NTP servers that synchronize with atomic clocks, which are the most accurate time source used today. The mobile operator may also use other methods to ensure time accuracy in the network, such as using GPS signals. However, NTP is the most common time synchronization protocol in mobile networks. Therefore, we can confidently say that by using the time of the mobile operator network, we are using atomic clocks.